Hi, Caleb. Dot here. Uh, I'm Pikachu, of course. Now, we're going to read another story from the Christmas Horus, a new chapter. Now, if you remember yesterday, we actually had a guest appearance in the video. If I'm not mistaken, we had a surprise guest. Who could it have been? You! You remember? Now in the story that we read, the hunter discovered the dinosaur and wanted that more than the magnificently magical reindeer. So now he's going to try and get them, but the dinosaur ended up in William's house. <gasps> Scary. Now, when I was getting this book, I found this. And then when I opened it up, I found this, and it was wonderful. I really, really liked it. You know what it says? It says, I love you and miss you. And it was from Kaylin. That was beautiful. Anyway, now that we've seen the card, Pikachu's here, I've got the book. It's time for you to get comfy. You comfy? Good. So, we're on chapter 17. A dinosaur in the house. The Christmasaurus landed with a crash in the fireplace. Luckily, the fire hadn't been lit. Because Mr Trundle knew that you should never light your fire on Christmas Eve. The dinosaur got to his feet and stepped out into William's empty living room. The Christmasaurus had never been in a room like this before. He had only ever known the large, oversized, magical rooms of the North Pole Ranch. And they were far grander than this wonky little room. But there was something he instantly liked about it. Something felt cosy, warm, happy. He could sense that the people who lived here were full of love. But there wasn't time to look around. He was desperate to see Stuffy one last time. He had to find his toy, say goodbye, and get back up to his sleigh before Santa caught him. He was being very naughty. His dinosaur eyes scanned the room, searching for any sign of the spotty wrapping paper or shiny red ribbon. But there was nothing. There was a small Christmas tree about the size of an elf He'd never seen one of those tiny one this tiny before. Which had a scattering of small presents underneath it, but none of them were stuffy. Santa must have put it in William's room. The Christmas orders knew that Santa did that sometimes. So he tiptoed out of the living room, sniffing the beige pattern carpet, following the scent of Santa, who smelt like fresh mint chocolate and tangerine. The door to the next room was slightly ajar, and through the crack the Christmas orders could just make out the shape of a small bed. Sitting in a sliver of a moonbeam on the bedroom floor was a beautifully wrapped dinosaur-shaped present for which he'd been searching. He slipped inside William's room, but paused for a moment to take in all the wonderful dinosaur pictures and toys and books and posters and wallpaper. He had never seen so much dinosaur stuff before. It was Dinah Awesome. Can you see William in the bed? As his eyes circled the room, they came back to Stuffy. Perfectly wrapped in the bedroom floor, he crept across the room as carefully as he could until he was face to face with where this Christmas dinosaur nose would be. Through a small slit in the wrapping paper, he could just make out the soft glow of the toy's golden button eyes staring out. Christmasaurus took a deep 
breath. This was it. This was goodbye. Goodbye to the first and only dinosaur friend he'd ever had. He gave it a crumpled hug through the wrapping paper and over his cuddly shoulder he saw William lying snugly asleep in his bed. It was at that moment that the Christmasaurus suddenly felt a funny feeling in his tummy. Like the sinking sort of feeling you get when you drive over a bridge really fast. Oh. He glanced around the room at the photo of William and Mr Trundle, then at the empty wheelchair next to the bed. He huffed a deep sigh through his nostrils and then straightened up the present so it looked as close to elf perfect as possible. It was time to let Stuffy go. That's when he heard it. Flush! Stomp! Stomp! It was the unmistakable sound of the toilet flushing, followed by Santa's boots stomping speedily down the hallway. He was marching faster and the Christmas Christmasaurus saw his jolly round shape past William's bedroom door. Santa was already in the living room. Oh, a carrot, my favourite, he heard Santa whisper before crunching into the tree. The Christmas Christmasaurus panicked. If he didn't make it back up to the roof before Santa, then he would be left behind. He turned clumsily on the spot and with a fud, his long tail swung around before hitting him, knocking off every book in William's bookshelf. All books about dinosaurs, of course. Then he took a great leap towards the door, but his clunky dinosaur claws got caught in Stuffy's wrapping ribbon, and the Christmas orders went tumbling, bumbling across to the other side of the bedroom, smash whacking into the wardrobe. As you can imagine, this made such a clatter that William woke up in an instant. What, 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 what's going on? He said for a yard, rubbing his sleepy eyes open. As the bedroom came into focus, William saw a large spotty presence sitting beyond the foot of his bed, hand tied with a red ribbon. But the ribbon had come undone. His eyes followed the loose red ribbon along the floor until it reached a large, scaly foot. The ribbon was caught around the Christmas Christmasaurus's claw, all tangled in knots. Before William could blink, before he could scream, before he could think, before he could even do anything whatsoever, the Christmas Christmasaurus bolted out of the bedroom at a hundred miles an hour, dragging the present behind him. William scrambled out of bed into his waiting wheelchair and chased after them. The Christmas Christmasaurus burst into the small, cosy living room, just in time to see Santa's big black boots disappear and magically up the chimney. He roared a panic roar and dived towards the fireplace, trampling over presents and tipping over the miniature Christmas tree in the process, sending decorations flying through the air. And scattering over the floor, but that didn't stop the Christmas owners. He crawled into the fireplace and looked up the chimney, which now seemed far too small for even an elf to get through. He tried desperately to jump climb and claw his way up, but it was no use. Santa's magic had worn off and the chimney flue had deflated back to its normal size. Then came the worst noise of all, the clopping of hooves, accompanied by soft Christmas music, echoed down the chimney, then all of a sudden seemed to disappear completely. The Christmas orders let out a howl like roar up the chimney into the sky above, but it was too late. They are gone. The Christmas Christmasaurus had been left behind. And it was at that moment, a bright round light switched on like a spotlight. It was a shaky, wobbly light. It was coming from a torch in William's nervous hand as he sat in his wheelchair at the door, looking at a dinosaur in his home. Now, that's the end of that chapter. It's quite a short chapter. The next chapter, I think, is going to be very good. It's called A Boy and a Dinosaur. And if you look, you'll see William with his spotlight pointing it right at the dinosaur. I think we're in for a treat next chapter. Anyway, it's time to get cosy. If you're not already asleep, it's time to go to sleep. Okay? Night-night. Love you.